What's up guys, it's BD here, and today we're gonna be reviewing the lightest gaming mouse ever made. Now this mouse is called the Zohone, that's the company name, I hope, hopefully I'm not butchering that name, it's a German name. The mouse is the M1K and it's 23 grams. That's right, only 23 grams, the lightest mouse out on the market currently. Now this mouse has been in the making for about seven years now by two brothers who set out to create the perfect fingertip grip mouse because let's be honest, like most of the mice that are out are for palm or claw they're really big and now we're seeing this kind of lighter smaller mouse come out and finally the fingertip grip users are getting some uh, recognition here their background was in rts games so this mouse was built around fine precise movements of units within games like starcraft but then when they tried it on like fps games they found that their aim had improved as well so my background is in fps as you guys all know so i was curious to see just how well this mouse would fare in game so today I'm going to be sharing my experience with the M1K and letting you guys know who this mouse could be for. So this is going to be a Kickstarter mouse and the starting price of this mouse is going to be 150 euros for the first 100 people that join the Kickstarter in the first 48 hours. Then the price will go up after each buying limit. The final price will be around 250 euros. The price is pretty expensive because they actually have made these handmade. They don't have some big warehouse. They're all, they're just two guys making these mice and they're actually doing a really good job at it and i'm okay with that because if somebody's putting the time the effort the blood the sweat the tears into making a mouse i think they should be rewarded the research and all the thought process that went behind this mouse i think these guys actually deserve it now it weighs in at 23 grams with its carbon fiber shell that's glossy structurally it feels very sturdy and the coating if it doesn't work for you you can always put some lizard skins on there to combat that i found the coating to be nice overall i had no issues with it the cord is thin and lightweight and it actually can stand up to a paracord when bending it as shown here now i personally can use it without a bungee just fine now this mouse is a fingertip grip mouse only i want to stress that there's no way you can even start to palm grip this mouse as it is very short which plays to the strength of fingertip grip users myself included for comparison this is 37 millimeters shorter than the ultralight 2 and way way shorter than the g305 there isn't a scroll wheel or side buttons and this helps with the balance and the weight of the mouse uh, but you'll also be losing some functionality from this as well so it can be a deal breaker for some people you have to like unlearn using the scroll wheel which i use the scroll wheel a lot for like b hopping and scrolling through items in uh, apex i felt like i died more because of this than actually being out aimed by my opponents you'll probably want to get a secondary mouse for like browsing and navigating your desktop it took me a longer period to loot and not being able to bunny hop got me killed in some situations they've also got four hyperglides on the bottom the best mouse feet on the market or on the planet in my opinion they glide perfectly on any surface the mouse one and two have some nice grooves the switches they went with are the japanese omrons which are some of the best i've ever felt and heard okay so let's do a sound test on the switches here's the mouse one and two And then we have the switches on the Ultralight 2, one of my other favorite mice currently. Uh, here we go. And you guys should be able to tell the difference between the two. I feel like the M1K is a little bit more richer, more full sounding, and they feel great in the hand. These are light and they're a little bit more like clicky sounding on the like light side. So, I can't really say whether one is better than the other. Uh, these just feel really, really premium. These are really expensive compared to the ones that are using the Ultralight 2, so there's that. There's zero lag switch debouncing, where some mice can have up to 40 milliseconds, which is worse than some people's internet connections, if you can believe that. Now, the M1K uses a debouncing technique called the set release latch method, in which they can prevent accidental double clicks without introducing any delays to the clicks or releases. So we start off with those opto mechanical switches from razor and their new razor viper mouse and now we're getting even more people starting to kind of innovate 
with their switches and their clicks. And I'm really interested in this type of technology for the advancement of the mouse hobby as a whole. This is actually a true advancement compared to like just focusing on the weight. I think we need more of the clicks. We need more better switches. We need better scroll wheels. There's a lot to be improved when it comes to mice. So I'm excited to see companies like this actually going in that direction. Now there is no software and everything can be done on board in real time. It's got onboard flash memory. So all your settings will be saved there. It goes by CPI and you can actually change the steps by 100 CPI each time. You do this by taking the mouse off the tabletop while suspended in the air. You hold down both mouse buttons and this enters the changing mode. This will actually make your cursor start bouncing in the number of CPIs that it is currently at. And then you put the mouse back down on the pad and then hit the left mouse button to go down 100 CPI and then you hit the right mouse button to go up 100 CPI. The cursor will then bounce each time that the CPI is changed so you can do it multiple times and then you set it so then to get out of the cpi mode you just hold down the mouse one and two again for like five seconds and then it does everything for you and then closes it and then you're ready to use your mouse you can also turn on and off the angle snapping you do this by holding down the left mouse button while plugging the mouse into your pc the cursor will then make a square on your desktop knowing that it is complete this will artificially keep your mouse cursor in a straight line even though your movement not, might not be that precise. I personally leave this off because I just don't want to have anything adjusting the mouse on its own or having a mind of its own. I just want to be able, if I'm going to make errors, I'm going to make errors. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of, that could go wrong when you have angle snapping on. But I can see where this could be valuable in like RTS games. To change the default lift off distance from the default two millimeters to three millimeters, you're going to do the same thing, but this time you're gonna hold down the right mouse button while plugging in the USB. Though M1K runs at 1000 Hertz on your computer so that your mouse gets data every one millisecond. On board on the actual mouse, it is set at 8000 Hertz. Uh, so you can actually use or unlock that on Windows by using a code that was made by Sweetlow. Putting the polling rate at 8,000 Hertz reduces input lag around 0.4375 milliseconds. I love that they are really pushing the boundaries of performance that we can get out of a mouse. It is truly inspiring to say the least. I'll link you guys down below. Uh, this does actually work with overclocking other older mice as well if you are interested. My experience with this mouse, it has been really, really good and positive. It's super accurate with this mouse once you get accustomed to the weight. The weight and the style of the mouse allows you to really pull back the mouse to your fingers having and being able to use more dexterity in your fingers which I've never actually had because most mice for however short they are still do not give you the freedom that this mouse can give you if you're a fingertip grip user. It simply cannot like I cannot touch the back of my palm with this mouse and usually that's very easy to do with most mice on the market currently the m1k is definitely a fingertip grippers dream aiming feels crisp and effortless with this balanced lightweight mouse i found myself not dying from gunfights like i said before but more from like a lack of the scroll wheel i just wasn't able to do things as fast as i once did and it kind of threw me off it might just take some getting used to um i think apex is a scroll heavy game but some games like csgo or overwatch i think you can get away with it if you train yourself properly i haven't played rts games in years but i can see this mouse being very good for that as well because you don't really use the scroll in those games at least i don't remember using them the aim community is also getting bigger and i can actually see this mouse breaking a few records uh, my kovac scores definitely saw a slight increase over some of the other lightweight mice that i've been using currently i'd have to say that this is definitely an enthusiast mouse it's not for everybody because of the lack of side buttons and the scroll wheel but if you can get past those two things or if you think that you can i think this can be a real treat for anybody to use uh, because they've thought of everything with this mouse from the internals the cord the hyperglyce the onboard firmware i really love the addition of the carbon fiber i think this is something that uh, more and more companies might be looking into in the future i don't know though because it's really really expensive to make the pricing is steep as well which is why you really have to love this hobby to pick one up and i don't think these will have any problems selling out uh, the ones that they made keep in mind you're getting a handcrafted mouse with the best of the best so you're gonna have to pay for that all right <laughs> all right guys so that's going to do it for this review. It has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.